the finely dressed man stood near to the bar, waiting to be served. As he did so, he looked around at his surroundings and sniffed the water out of his nostrils, of his large nose, as he wiggled it this way and that. He raised a finger to the barkeep, but was unnoticed in the crowd. I say, my man, we would order some drinks, perchance. Still nothing. The Kislevite, Tordrad, finally caught up with him and pushed through the crowd, parting them like they were corn in a field. He held up two fingers and said, Vodka, in a strained Reichspiel attempt. It was clear that the Empire's language did not come easy to him at all. The noble-like man rushed forwards quickly and said, Oh, not for me, Tordred. I'm not drinking that again. The Kislevite replied with eyes beginning to look at the ceiling. I know. That is why I only ordered two. The only problem was Tordrad could only speak in his Kislevite language, and so his reply did not get through to the smaller man. However, he had gestured those same two fingers at his own chest as he had said it, and there had been enough for the barman to understand. With that, the barman placed the whole bottle of vodka on the bar before Tordrad. A big grin appeared on his face. This was his kind of bar. Well, jolly good then, said the smaller man as he settled up upon the bar stall next to Tordrad. And I would partake of a glass of milk, barkeep. Some of the men nearby scowled at him. It wasn't just his drinks order or his clothing. There was something about his voice in its refinement yet high-pitched eccentric tone that would grate at some people after long enough exposure to it. Some of the men here tonight had arrived in the city for the first time earlier today. The smaller well-dressed man, though, had lived in this city all of his life, and tonight might well be the last time he'd ever see it, he felt. Fate had a strange way of dealing with Maestro Raphael Elefacion. It was as if it had a plan for him, but it always meant him doing the opposite of what he truly wanted to do. He'd given up so much just to get to this point, and now he was about to give up his whole world as he saw it, and all to keep the higher powers happy. Why were they so worried about him anyway, he wondered. He had no idea, because like so many other things around him, he was oblivious, living in a little world of his own. He had never truly lived. As he sat on the bar next to Tordrad, he considered that he was perhaps the joke of fate itself, with it even conspiring with the Emperor to expel him from the city. His city, from his home and his comforts. He shook off those uncomfortable thoughts and spoke to the barman. My good man, I must confess, the reason I am here now is the name of your establishment being such. The barman feigned interest at what he perceived to be an upcoming conversation he'd had thousands of times already and replied, Ah! You're curious about how it got that name. Tordrad was shaking his head and looking down at the bar as if embarrassed by Maestro. Well, yes, came the fine-clothed individual. In my younger years, I once saw a two-headed goose, or I thought it was at least. It turned out to be one goose standing in front of the other. <laughs> in the end. While Tordrad couldn't speak Reichspiel, he had an uncanny knack of understanding roughly what Maestro was saying. This was clear as his face was now within his palm. The barman was pouring another drink of vodka into Dordrad's glass and answered, Well, the day we opened, we got a two-headed goose in for the cooking pot. More meat for the same price? I thought it was a lucky sign. Maestro nodded as if impressed. Tordrad downed his freshly poured glass of vodka snatching it up as soon as the barman had finished pouring and said quietly in Kislevite, They're both idiots, really. Maestro smiled at Tordrad and quickly replied with an enthusiasm that didn't match his companions, Yes, I agree, Tordrad. It definitely does sound fortuitous. A little while later, the bar had become smokier still. Maestro was stood at the Oki playing darts on his own. Tordrad was at the bar singing a song in Kislevian, getting everyone else to join in, mumbling a parody of the words in drunken content. The shady figure remained there still, the wine had not been touched, and the bottle nearby was as full as it had been. The bar wenches seemed to naturally stay clear of his table, seemingly without realising they were doing it. 
it was as if it didn't even exist. The white-robed and hooded woman finally emerged from upstairs, where she had promptly gone soon after arriving, after she talked to the barman. She had a mask tied across her face, the like of which would have been worn by priests who visited the plagued to offer some comfort. Those present in the bar had seen her come downstairs in that attire with prayer book in hand, and in concern most of them rose to leave. A priestess, or at least an initiate of Shalia, was not hard to recognise. As she reached the ground floor, she pulled the mask off and everyone relaxed a little, but that still didn't stop them leaving the bar. It was soon 80% cleared of patrons. Those who remained were either too drunk, oblivious, or set about their own tasks for the night, that they would not be uprooted by the threat of plague. She had been called in tonight when a patron refused to leave his room after his money to pay for board had run out, claiming he had contracted plague. It was true he had become covered in spots and redness, but it was also possible that this man was trying to stay at the inn for free. The order of Shalia had been contacted to find the truth in the man's words. This is how she had arrived here. The barman asked readily, So, is he pulling a fast one, miss? Rosandria considered the man's words for a moment and then put him out of his misery. He is sickening, the man you speak of, but it is not plague. With that, the barman sighed a relief as Rosandria continued. He has the effects of an allergic reaction about him. Suddenly the barman became hard-faced. Yeah, an allergy to paying his bills, more like. Rosandri ignored the anger in his voice and continued, He must have inhaled or consumed something that does not agree with him. Either way, I have advised that his best route of recovery is away from here. He is getting ready to leave now. Ha! came the barman's cynical, narrow-minded response. He probably knew he was allergic to a bit of chicken or the like and snuck some in here to eat after booking the room. Rosandria sighed. That would be unlikely. He has been very ill, this man. I have given him salves for his skin rashes and prayed from the Holy Scripture. Rosandria turned to leave as the barman held up the piece of paper with the man's bill on it. This is the only scripture that is holy to me, miss, and I mean to see it fulfilled. The woman pushed her glasses gently back onto her nose, with her back turned to the bar now and asked, I trust you will settle the matter of your donation in payment to the church before tonight? The barman was about to kick up a ruckus about the loss of more funds and then thought better of it. This woman was essentially a good person. Aye, he said, twelve chickens ready for stuffing. They'll be plucked when you get them. Rosandria nodded gently and began to walk away. The barman left his post and walked upstairs, leaving a wench to serve for him. Before the Shalian initiate could leave, a man sitting beside the door grabbed her forcibly by the wrist. He was clearly drunk. The offensive smell of his liqueur fumed up at the woman and she pulled the hood across her face a little more with her free hand. Eee, gorgeous! <laughs> About a bloody good drink on me, on my tab and on my lap. <laughs> Rosandria looked at the man with utter contempt. I do not drink. The man didn't let go. He pulled on her arm to yank her over to him and suggested, And what about a place on my lap for the evening? <laughs> Rosandria took her hood down, getting hot and clearly angered in her deep, dark brown eyes. Behind her black-framed glasses, this effect seemed to only make the man more excited as he saw her fresh-smelling chestnut-coloured hair sensibly tied up in a bun. She looked so fresh she could almost be a virgin, he fancied, internally to himself. I do not spend time with men either. Oh, rubbish! What sort of wench doesn't he lay with a man? Especially, especially one as grand a man as I be. I am not a serving wench. I am an initiate of Shalia, a devout of the Vore subsect who 
do not drink or partake of emotional comforts whatsoever. I have never known love, nor will I. Now will you let me go, or is this going to become a problem? The man smiled with an awareness suddenly about him through his drunken state. Ah, so you're a lesbian then? I'm no choosy. I'll buy you a drink if you let me watch your girly friend lover in ye. The man smiled pathetically, showing a set of partly broken and chipped teeth. You know, doing the bad thing. Rissandria had no idea what the man was going on about. Tordrad was looking across with concern on his face. Already he had stepped down from the bar store and began to walk over to the scene at the door, but was beaten to it by a grizzled-looking sailor with a cigarette that he seemed, for all appearances, to keep in his mouth so often that the dry skin of his lips made the permanent dent for it that was now there.